Like most things in 2020, my December didn't go exactly to plan, but I managed to make the most of things thanks to the great games I already had, including finishing one that ended up being in my top 5 for 2020. Finishing that and some videos meant I didn't end up picking up the Taiko no Tatsujin Rhythmic Adventure games I had originally planned on, but not picking that up meant I had some room for some smaller experiences, including a quick try of what is probably my most anticipated JRPG of the year, a smartphone-inspired game that came to Switch, and even a return to a game that I mostly enjoyed in the past as I got that simulation bug again. So with more things than I'd planned to talk about and the start of a new year of JRPGs to get to, let's get right into the JRPGs I played in December. In December, I had an extremely interesting time with my Yakuza Like a Dragon experience. Naturally, it ended well with Like a Dragon ending up on my top JRPGs list for 2020, but there were multiple times I got stuck and had to grind and make money due to certain in-game objectives that had me rethinking my feelings about it at times. But Like a Dragon's fantastic side content and main story ended up fully winning me over in the end as it reminded me of the importance of taking your time to get to know the characters and world in depth that can be easy to forget after reviewing many games, and thanks to this, I found so many hidden things that I may not have necessarily seen if I'd stuck to the main story, including things that expanded my potty to a mad kimchi quest that always made me laugh, and reminded me of the joy of playing how you want in a game is something I'll always appreciate like a dragon for, aside from its hard-hitting ending that left a big impression on me too. It might not have ended up being my game of the year, but I am more than happy to give it JRPG of the month thanks to how much I loved it. I even ended up playing more of its post-game, which saw me make so much money managing Ichiban confections that I didn't even notice the hours fly by, and it's given me a bit of a management simulation bug that's seen me download another game similar that I'll talk about later in this video. I think I'm satisfied with Like a Dragon for now though, although maybe I'll be drawn back by the few quests I have left over someday. But until then, I'll be working on my review for it to talk about my experience in more detail, and I hope more people enjoy this JRPG that is equal parts wacky and moving and well worth playing. One thing that did go to plan in December was trying out Atelier Ryza 2, which I spent a lovely day with in December in the early parts of the game, and I'm pleased to say it was fun to try all the new things in Ryza 2's world, from its refreshed battle system to the new ways to explore the world. With new exploration methods like swimming and climbing and a big area to do them in, it seems like it's going to be a lot of fun to run around in on top of the gathering and synthesis I already love. And even though I only touch what could be considered the tip of the iceberg of all the new ways to explore in this Rise of sequel, giving it a try got me very excited to try the full game, especially after seeing the lovable Riser again at the start of a new and intriguing adventure. It's probably needless to say at this point, but the experience got me extra glad it's less than a month to go till when it comes out in English, and with all the polish to systems I already love with new ones sprinkled in here and there, it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. If you want to know more about my Rise of 2 experience and haven't seen my first impressions video yet, feel free to go check it out to learn more about the game and my experience with it. And until next month, I'll be looking back on my time with the Japanese version fondly, as it's made me sure this second Ryza game is going to be a great one. Towards the first half of December, I received an email from Netmarble's PR offering a code for Seven Nights Time Wanderers on Switch, and while at that time I was still deep into Yakuza Like a Dragon, I decided to take the code as I'd been interested enough in it before to mention it in quick takes and ended up being glad I did as I enjoyed it more than I expected. I happened to play it during a night after writing a couple of scripts that I intended to record later and actually ended up losing the rest of the evening to this game because it had me hooked thanks to its quick pacing. I really liked playing this game on Switch rather than smartphone, which is probably where I should mention that this Time Wanderers game is actually a spin-off in the Seven Nights universe and not the actual smartphone game like I initially thought, which does mean I might have to look at it a little more harshly if I end up reviewing it. But it's not bad for some simple JRPG fun thanks to its easy-to-use turn-based system, and since I love many of its Japanese voice actors like Hina Kino who has the cutest voice of all time, I am at least a little keen to keep going with it to see where this story will go. Hopefully I end up finishing it and reviewing it, but at the moment I'd say it's not bad as long as you treat it as an alternative for the mobile game like I did when I started, and I hope it continues to be enjoyable as I spend more time with it. 
In one of the more random things I played this month, Yakuza Like a Dragon's management simulation minigame gave me an itch to play more of that kind of thing. But since I'd gotten to the point in that where I was pretty much just maintaining things, it made me think about games I had in my collection that could scratch the same itch. That ended up reminding me that I had Nelke in the Legendary Alchemist, and growing a city's finances and population seemed close to what I enjoyed about managing Ichiban confections all while catering to my love of Atelier. And since I have New Game Plus data that means my playthrough wouldn't be as long, I decided to re-download this game that I hadn't played for about a year and a half. I'm not exactly that far in, but so far I think it's what I wanted and more. Setting up my town to have the gardens, stores, and ateliers I want has been pleasant, and then seeing the results at the end of each turn gives me that simulation kick I'd been looking for. And since I'm playing more for the simulation side this time, despite the battle system being super simple, I don't mind so much as it's not my main focus for once, and it's an interesting way to look at this game I'd be much more critical of in the past as it's not bad as a simulation game, and I still wouldn't mind if Gus did another with the newer Atelier characters, maybe for the series 25th anniversary and with some improvements. In saying that, I have also been reminded of some of the stuff I didn't enjoy so much, such as a line that was weirdly randomly unvoiced because the English dialogue had an extra line to fully explain the Japanese. I already knew about these things since I played it before, so it's not really bothering me as much, and on the plus side, I am glad to say I haven't seen this in a Koei Tecmo game since. It is worth keeping in mind if you're a newer Atelier fan who is hearing about this for the first time, so if you think it looks good, maybe check out a review such as my own as it is an enjoyable game, but it does have its flaws. At the moment, I'll probably keep this on my console until I stop having the simulation urge, and may even go through the trophies to see what I can do while it's on my system. I'd be curious to hear about any random games you guys have revisited recently, as there's always something nice about going back to enjoyable experiences. Experiences. And whether I play much more or just a little, it was fun to revisit this unique Atelier experience. My JRPG plan for the first month of this new year is pretty simple and I'm sure most of you can guess what it is, which is playing Atelier Ryza 2. I love the idea of Atelier Ryza 2 being my first JRPG of 2021, especially since it looks full of everything I love about Atelier and JRPGs, like exploration, synthesis, and fun JRPG battles. And while it does come out later in the month as it'll be out on January the 26th for North America, there actually aren't any other big releases coming out during the month. So I'm more than happy to wait and start a year of new video games in a way that feels right to me. In saying that, it's not like I'll be playing nothing over those 26 days, although I'll probably take time to make videos to be as free as possible for that release. I have a couple of reviews I want to do along with a few other ideas, but I'm sure I'll find time for games in between, with things I'm interested in playing being the rest of Seven Nights Time Wanderer, trying the new snowy area in Genshin Impact, or the new Bravely Default demo, so if you'd be interested in hearing about any of those, feel free to let me know in the comments. Otherwise, there's plenty to be excited for this year, and I hope to share the games I'm most excited to play soon, so that's probably the video you'll see next on this channel. Until then, Happy New Year to everyone watching this video, I hope you stick around this year, and let's look forward to experiencing another great year of JRPGs together, and what is hopefully a better year overall. Thank you for watching this video, let me know in the comments below what you played in December and what you plan to play in January. You can like and share this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel for more JRPG content like this, and ring that bell to get notifications on whenever I post so you don't miss a thing. You can check out more videos here, and you can find me on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at JRPG Jungle. Links to those will be in the description below, and until next time, thank you, bye!